Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team My 365. Today's episode, we're talking the September updates for Microsoft in 2022. If you followed along with my update videos in the past, you know I focus in on what's relevant to the MSP space, blogging out the noise and the hundred or so announcements that come from Microsoft each month. As always, if this content's helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Getting into it here, we're gonna start off with Microsoft Teams as we usually do. This first one is Cameo in PowerPoint Live. You can see this depicted in the video down below, but it's basically integrating your camera feed into the presentation layer within PowerPoint, within your Teams meeting. This is GA today, so you can begin playing around with that now. Next one here is Scheduled Send for Teams Chat, much like if you're familiar with the ability to schedule an Outlook email to go out for certain users. Just basically respecting time zones or after hours when you're actually sending messages. You can schedule this up to seven days in the future. This will be GA in early November. Next one here is related to an Inspire announcement that's coming more into a GA time frame here. This is giving you this is the ability to share and collaborate an Excel workbook within the Teams meeting. This will happen mid-October and be complete by late November. Next one is quick access to Teams and SharePoint document libraries. As we all know, we have many growing repositories throughout our Teams and SharePoint environments. So this is just giving users a little bit more user-friendly interface to traverse different libraries to find and discover the documents that they want to work on within the Teams environment, within the Office applications as well too. Like in the screenshot down below, this is Word, but you can imagine you can do this for Excel, PowerPoint as well too. This will happen early January, be complete by late January. Next one here is giving you the ability to view the full chat conversation thread after clicking a searched message result. This is a pain point for me, I'm sure it is for a lot of people. If you search for a message and you try to click on it, it just shows you that isolated message without the whole context. It's kind of fixing that issue and giving the whole context of everything going on in between. So you don't have to basically scroll all the way back to, to see the, the context around that message. This will happen early October, be complete by late October. Next one here is related to the telephony portion of the Teams environment itself. So it's giving you the music on hold for call transfer. For some people, this may be a trigger if you really don't like the hold music. For other people, it's very important to have that instead of listening to nothing while calls are being transferred behind the scenes. So this will have a mid-September be complete by late September. Video clips and Teams chat. This is another Inspire announcement again coming into GA here. It's giving users the ability to send a video message within Teams. It's limited to one minute as far as the recording goes on all platforms, meaning on desktop and mobile. This will happen late September, be complete by early October. So you guys should be seeing this too soon within your Teams environment. Last one here for Teams, this is automatically view up to 49 videos, seven by seven in a Teams meeting. Previously, before this feature was out, you had to go in and select a large gallery view to do this. So you had to take explicit action. This is now just going to take this action by default if there are that many participants on the call. So this will happen late September, be complete by early October. Again, so you may be seeing this pretty soon in your environment. Shifting into Microsoft Viva here, this is a new feature with Viva Insights and Microsoft Teams. This is meeting effectiveness surveys within the Teams integration itself. So you can see that down in the screenshot below here, but this is basically giving users a survey to record their thoughts and give feedback to the organizer of the meeting on the effectiveness of it and what could have made it better, as you can see there. So this does require a Viva Insights license, just to note that, but this is going to be GA worldwide by the end of October. Shifting into the final section here, this is some Microsoft admin updates. GDAP is another one I wanna to touch on again. I touched on this last month, but it is gaining a lot of traction now because of the impending timelines that are out today. So again, you have a bulk migration tool to move you from the traditional DAP relationships into GDAP relationships but that's only gonna be available until October 31st. Microsoft may change those timelines here as they do with a lot of things where uh, the feedback has been, give us more time to do this. But essentially here, the tool itself uses command line and CSVs. So the guys over at CIPP, the CyberDrain Improved Partner Portal, 
uh, built a migration tool that's a lot more user friendly that allows you to move one to many customers and select all the roles of which you want to establish your new GDAP relationships. Highly encouraged to check that out if you haven't been using that already. It's a lot easier way to transition throughout this experience versus having to manually modify CSV tables to basically upload into the command line tool itself too. Last one here, basic auth end of life. This is just another heads up a reminder for the end of life services. Microsoft will be shutting off the various protocols that you can see listed here. And this is something that they're going to do on a random tenant basis. They'll give you notice within the tenant and then they'll shut that off within, I believe, seven days as well too. So you want to do some proactive work here to make sure that nobody is using any type of legacy authentication with these various methods. SMTP auth is not included as, as part of a heavy asterisk, I would say, as part of this, but you can look through the sign-in logs or you can run PowerShell scripts to pull out any type of legacy auth going on within these environments. I'll link that below. But the CIPP app also does have reporting on this as well too within that environment. So again, just another good reason to go ahead and install that if you haven't already. Timelines for this October 1st. So again, you might start getting customers with these notices in there and you just wanna avoid any disruption in service. That's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys today and I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, like or subscribe if you guys wanna see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks guys, have a great day.